So yes, we aim to learn more about the approaches used by policymakers to implement mental health programs and how policymakers are aiming to achieve the Comprehensive Mental Health Action Plan 2013-2020 targets. We focus on the mechanism applied by Lebanon to achieve the targets of Objective 1 of the Mental Health Action Plan through strengthening of effective leadership and governance for mental health. I would like to start by especially thanking our distinguished speaker for today, Dr. Rabi Shammai, head of the National Mental Health Program at the Ministry of Public Health in Lebanon. During Dr. Shammai's presentation, you can always send a question using the chat function to our HQ. floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Fahmi. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are on the globe. I uh, would like to start by thanking the organizers, the WHO and the uh, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, for this opportunity to be talking to you about the work we're doing in Lebanon. Uh, I just was uh, Fahmi, and so I'll go through the presentation, and then at the end, we will have also uh, questions. Uh, Hopefully, a session for questions and answers. Um, before I uh, ask the presentation, I would like to, to acknowledge all the good people and the good organizations that are supporting this program. To the screen, you, you could find first the uh, name of the Director General of the Ministry, who is our champion, and I think this is uh, I cannot stress enough how important for for any uh, reform to have a champion, a policy maker, and someone a decision maker who can push things forward. Our founding partners, WHO, UNICEF, IMC, and our our list of also uh, partners who are joining, and the list is growing. To the, to the screen, you can see the team uh, who are working full time in the ministry, in addition to the supporting team who are giving part from IMC and from WHO and the interns as well. The objectives of this presentation are going to be three. I will start by presenting the process that led to the reform, to briefly present the mental health strategy, so the document in itself, and finish by discussing some lessons learned uh, in these two years. Uh, with you. So, what I will follow is going to be five points. The first one, uh, focusing mainly on the acceleration period in 2013, then give a snapshot of the mental health system in Lebanon in 2014, going to the strategy document, then zoom in on the human rights as a cornerstone of the strategy and how we envision, uh, uh, envision it as a cross-cutting theme instead of just a vertical system on its own, and by the lessons learned. So, what happened in 2013? Uh, just to brief for those of you who are not familiar with Lebanon, Lebanon is uh, a small country on the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea. On the picture, you can see Beirut, and back uh, in the picture, you can see Amazon and uh, some snow. So as you see, this geography is really uh, a nice one. But this being said, Lebanon has had a very uh, long history of civil war and political unrest. Its population is around 4 million, and it hosts for more than 60 years now around uh, 400,000 Palestinian refugees. So it was the landscape on the sea rise has started in Lebanon. At a point in time, we had 1.5 million registered refugees within Lebanon. Uh, speculation were that at some point they were more, but part of them were not registered. This is the most up-to-date number of Syrian refugees in Lebanon right now, so 1.1 million, which is more than the quarter of the population in refugees the highest number of refugees per capita worldwide right now. 
2013 UNHCR commissioned an assessment for the mental health and psychosocial services provided for the persons affected by the Syrian crisis. You can find the assessment on the link that you can see on the website uh, on the PowerPoint. So the main finding of this report is a lack of coordination between actors, lack of health and psychosocial services, a referral system, assumption between the refugees and the host community, lack of basic services was one of the major sources of distress for the refugees. So it's also a set of recommendations in this report. And one of them was to start a coordination mechanism. And this was the step was taken by the ministry. So the ministry, in collaboration with WHO and UNICEF, started a mental health and psychosocial task force with the aim of harmonizing the Response, making sure that the services are in line with international guidelines. Currently, the task force hosts more than 62 actors from different agencies. Also, Lebanon, it meets centrally in Beirut, it meets in the Beka area, so the border to the northern border and to the southern border. So, we have four uh, groups of coordination. Uh, uh, for mental health and psychosocial support. Interestingly enough, this task force is really targeting persons affected by the crisis. It is also uh, starting to become part of a national coordination mechanism also for the uh, services available for the Lebanese population and also for the Palestinian refugees. task force that was launched in uh, January 2014, in 2014, the three, in part with WHO, International Medical Corps, and UNICEF, launched the first national mental health program in the country with aim of bringing the mental health system. So they started that first working mainly uh, around certain activities like integrating mental health into primary care with the MH cap, coordinating uh, uh, the four W's exercise between different agencies. And well, starting, started to do a mapping of the mental health uh, system uh, as 2014. With we that we use the WHO aims, which is a tool to the mental health systems and countries. And this report is also available on the link that you can see in front of you. This, uh, you can definitely read it, but just in a snapshot, what does it say about the mental health system in Lebanon? It says mainly a hospital based mental system, mainly based on the private sector. In the big cities, mainly Beirut, all the of public health covers inpatient care and psychotropic medication for people who don't have any other coverages. Private insurances do not fully cover mental health services. And non specialized mental health, uh, uh, health professionals at the PC level, these nurses, social workers, were not equipped to provide mental health. So this was background on which before started. That was uh, in May 2014. A main action that uh, was taking is to work on a document that would become later on actually a roadmap for the mental health system in Lebanon. Mental health and since use prevention, promotion, and treatment strategy 2015-2020. It's available on the link that you could see in front of you. The is that we took a draft that uh, the ministry did with WHO in 2011, and this draft 
was put aside back then because circumstances were not uh, optimal to start working on deforming the system. So we took back this draft. We revised it by National Mental Health Program in line with the Action Plan 2013-20. That draft was revised by local and international experts and agencies, the WHO, uh, UNICEF, UNHCR, and that as a draft in March 2016. This uh, draft, uh, as well, was uh, subject to a few consultation uh, meetings. To come to a final consensus meeting, a document that was launched in May 2015. Now we're working on implementing this document, and we're happy to say that we're following the, the same target for each year. It's, it has become a very really successful reference. Authors in Lebanon refer to it uh, and are trying to align their activities with it. Documents say it starts with, of course, the vision of all people living in Lebanon will have the opportunity to enjoy the best possible mental health and well being. It's some people in Lebanon that we're very inclusive of the Syrian displaced populations and the Palestinian refugees and other also non Lebanese living in Lebanon. The vision states very clearly that the aim is to build a sustainable mental health system that guarantees the universal ability to high quality mental health services uh, that cost effective evidence based also done in line with human rights and are currently relevant values around which we are the autonomy of the person building the dignity make they are participating in the design of services they can take control of their own life, own decisions, and they want, they want to be with their uh, communities. From the end of the services, ensuring a good quality, accountability, and an integrity. Uh, the strategy has on all five domains, leadership and governance, service organization, promotion and prevention, health information system and research, and the fifth domain that's very particular to Lebanon that we call vulnerable groups, and explain later on why. Leadership and governance, we're working on laws. Uh, there's a void in this area in Lebanon, so on laws, for example, to, uh, to regulate the profession of psychotherapists in Lebanon, we're doing this with local psychological uh, societies and associations, revising the budgets, developing an advocacy uh, uh, strategy to fight stigma and to improve coverage of mental health services, revi revising the policies and establishing a mental health department at the Ministry of Public Health. Organization, we're uh, working on reorientation of services towards community-based services, so building the level of uh, Health care by integrating the mental health into it and then building the second level of community services and ensuring a functional referral system. Forces, we're closely working with different uh, universities, mainly the Lebanese University, on training their uh, teachers on the MH gap that uh, will be integrated in their curricula, conducting a copyright. The assessment in 2017. We're looking into the psychotropic medication list and we're editing an e mental health guided self help intervention with WHO this year. In addition, so we started with IMC and Columbia University uh, an IPT training uh, to have local trainer, trainers able to uh, train uh, psychologists on interpersonal psychotherapy because we would like to move towards evidence based. Brief therapies that in the case of IPT are also trans diagnostic. The domain of the strategy is promotion and prevention, and here we're working mainly on these four points. We're working with the Ministry of Education, 
in developing an action plan for mental health in schools, with maternity programs in the Ministry of Public Health. With the Ministry of Social Affairs, we're working on including mental health components in their protection programs. And we're building a national framework for suicide prevention and monitoring. Currently, we're trying to raise funds to start by establishing uh, in the two years from now, a helpline for, for suicide. For the information system and the research, so the aim is to build the health information system able to generate the right indicators to follow up on the services delivered and to guide service development. And just finalized also with, uh, for w, uh, with the UNDP, an online 4W tool. 4W is a mapping tool that uh, let, let us know who's doing what, where, and until when, and basis to build the referral system. The groups, which is a very specific domain for Lebanon, uh, discussed a lot about what kind of words should we use. Should we use marginalized groups? or vulnerable groups, and we decided to use vulnerable groups, and this is the definition we chose for vulnerable groups. Uh, we define them as persons who are in situations that might put them at a higher risk for developing uh, mental disorders or to have psychological distress, or they might need specific interventions to their needs. Who are groups? Adolescents, we wanted to highlight them uh, to highlight them as a vulnerable group, specifically for children and adolescents and uh, living in hardship situations or in conflict with the law. Domestic workers in Lebanon, all families of disappeared persons from armed conflict and from the war in Lebanon, the in gay, bisexual, and transgender community, persons receiving palliative care. Refugees and for the Palestinian refugees, we are working closely with UNRWA, who's actually currently also uh, 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 developing their own strategy uh, to scale up mental health uh, services in Lebanon and also at HQ level. Living with disability, persons living with HIV AIDS, persons in prisons, and for this in particular, we are developing. Uh, specific strategies that should be out uh, with uh, with the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Interior that should be out in April. Survivors of sexual gender-based violence, survivors of torture and their families, and displaced populations. Right. Uh, and how did we go about it within the strategy? We're all in agreement about the importance of considering human rights when planning the services or the intervention in mental health. But sometimes the operationalization of it becomes a bit difficult. So how did we go about it in, in, in the, the strategy? It starts from the mission, the vision, and the value. So the vision, um, it's very inclusive. So it's inclusive of all persons living uh, in Lebanon, not only for Lebanese, so it's not discriminating against anyone. The mission, it states very clearly, and the values are all of them actually aiming at empowering the person and keeping them the main decision maker for their life and treatment. And strategy uh, have specific uh, strategic objectives that tackle human rights. One is developing a strategy for advocacy and fighting stigma. And one is facilitating the establishment of an independent user association. So uh, a user association that would not be depending on any uh, government institution or any uh, university or any NGO, but that would be able to advocate for the rights of uh, service users and work also as a watchdog for the system. We win a quality right uh, assessment using the HO Quality Right Toolkit in 2017. We 
are promoting the recovery model as a model of care. Ending the community services, which means people be staying in their community, is in itself is an action of protecting the human rights uh, uh, and protecting them from abuse. And to specifics, we were very careful at choosing the word thing. Instead say, of saying uh, uh, ill uh, patients, we always use person with person with disability, person with schizophrenia, except persons and prisons. Just emphasis that having a disorder does not take away uh, uh, your uh, your innate value of being a person uh, and then human being who has their own their full range of rights. And uh, I think that we were very careful also about is translating into Arabic persons with disability. In Arabic, we don't have a consensus into how do you translate that. So what we did is that we chose to translate it into persons living in a dis disabling situation. But this, we explained that when we talk about with disability, disability is not in the person but it's in the interaction between the person's need and the resources in the environment. So, and it is recognizing that uh, it's it's the environment that needs to be also uh, adapting itself to needs of persons. Uh, we explained also within the strategy why do what do we mean by vulnerable groups and why did we state that. Most, if you take a closer look into the vulnerable group, you would see that people at the high risk of uh, 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 human rights violations are highlighted as uh, as groups that needs to be uh, uh, totally uh, uh, included in all the uh, the form that is taking place. For domestic workers in Lebanon, they have the best situation actually when it comes to human rights and we have specific objectives to assess the needs and also to advocate for covering their uh, needs for mental health services within their insurance schemas. This is with HIV AIDS, persons in prisons, the LGBT community, family, the fa for the families of the disappeared persons from armed conflict and war. So during the war in Lebanon a lot of people disappeared. 17,000 that and don't know what happened to their loved ones. So we have a strategic objective that is not service provision. Actually, the strategic objective that was agreed on by all the national act and all this process that led to the document is building a national memorial for the persons who disappeared during the war. So it's more of a recognition of the loss and at the same time try to have a healing action at the community level survivors of uh, SGBV and survivors of torture who clearly are uh, uh, violated when it comes to their human rights. What did we learn from, from these two so far? The first one, I think it's not uh, strange to any of you, it's like emergencies in general can be an opportunity to reform the mental health system, which is the case in many countries as highlighted by uh, WO report building back better. The second point is even sometimes easier to build a parallel system to cater for the need of persons in humanitarian settings, please take the option to strengthen existing ones. It's sustainable on the long run. And the next two ones that I've bolded, uh, I think these are the two main lessons. There was only two lessons that I would share with you. It would be these two ones. Uh, first one is to activate and involve local actors. So in, in any country, you always have actors. They're not always uh, maybe on the same wavelength. They don't see eye to eye, but do invest in to them, discussing with them, getting them on board. Because when you activate their own resources, you don't have to be the only one implementing the strategy. Actually, you can go further and much faster. You have universities, you have mental health specialists, orders, scientific societies. These are 
this resources, invest in the time to have good connection and good collaborations with them. The second point is to maximize the resources by creating synergies between different organizations and agendas. Uh, for the program in Lebanon, it started with the collaboration between the ministry, WHO, UNICEF, and National Medical Corps. Of course, bureaucracy sometimes gets things a bit, a bit complicated, but when you have different agencies and each agency with their own network of, of donors, specialists, it can be such a resource for, for the program, and each one of them can be working on a specific activities and domains and including part of the strategic objective and their own strategies, which was the case, for example, very clearly for UNICEF and uh, that uh, a few weeks uh, ago had uh, a planning meeting for this, their strategy for the coming four years and they include part of the strategic objective of the mental health strategy in their own strategy. Same with IMC, same with uh, WHO. And that closely and supporting the strategy in Lebanon. Um, another important lesson to be learned is participation of everyone be an ongoing process, not an event. So event, inviting everyone for one uh, event is nice, but pay off on the longer run. So it's much. It sometimes it might slow things down. It might create more difficulties but it pays off at the end. So as much as possible, keep everyone involved uh, in, in the development of, of the work. And always acknowledge their work organization. Another point that, that's important and that we're struggling with a bit in Lebanon right now because uh, the process started and we started implementing at the same time. So build your processes as soon as possible. These are important. Important priorities are usually set by your values, but between the resources and the priorities, you need to have really strong processes. So build them as soon as possible. Don't assume that things will go just because people mean well or just because we have the resources. Make sure, in, in, in cases where you have doubts about which direction to take, which decision to take, even after talking with different. Uh, uh, actors, or or you might have also mentors, as I do, fall back on the values uh, that that uh, put guide your work, because you can always find the answer in your own values and the values of the strategy that you work on it. It's important to have a plan, but very important, specifically if you're starting something new, to be ready for any emergency opportunity and not to dismiss it just because you have a plan. Sometimes it will put a lot of strain on your on your resources, but sometimes it's very uh, very unfortunate to miss opportunities. Some opportunities will not come again. It's important also, uh, even you're working nationally, not to forget to build your international network. Uh, for the program, you have so much resources like this uh, 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 the Mental Health Innovation Network, like WHO, like other specialists, other universities. Build your, uh, the relationship of your program from day one and ask people for their support. If you have a clear question, if you have a clear uh, 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 domain you would like to be to inquire about, people will be more than happy to support. So ask. Spend a lot of energy, as much as needed, actually, on the persons and on the team doing the work. Because in stressful situations, you your team to be do to be able to cope with the stress. And when hearing high character and level of motivation, I mean, of there's a minimum requirement. But these two components are much more important, at least with experience we have right now in Lebanon than uh, in degrees or uh, the name of the university that the person might come from. If you are leading this uh, the, the process, I think it would be um, it would be a good idea to get used that you will be learning by doing because uh, uh, 
most of us, at least for me, I've never done this before. So find yourself in places where you would need to learn and read and ask, and you will you will be pushing your uh, your comfort zone every day, and it's a very uncomfortable situation if you really like to your work to be always as perfect as possible. But take it other uh, uh, perspective and say like it's part of the packet. You're doing it uh, right now. Person doing it, so make the best of it. Do learn while you're doing it. It becomes less stressful on you. Start taste for meetings because you have a lot of a lot a lot of meetings, and you do that simply make action points and circulate. These are valuable uh, and will will come handy uh, in the future for you. Your communication skills, your oral ones, and Written ones. Keep enough healthy food and some exercise. And last but not least, make sure to find time for the good ones. You watch as they do. So, in a nutshell, uh, what I want to share with you, I leave it now to to Dr. Fahmi to to tell us what's the next step. Doctor, thank you very much for, for this excellent and, and very informative presentation, which show clearly the major steps applied by the Ministry of Public Health in Lebanon to, to achieve targets of, of objective one of the, of the Global Mental Health yeah. Action Plan. I, I, really, I really appreciate uh, that you shared with us during your presentation lots of, lots of insight uh, uh, and lots of, of know-how of the mechanism you and your your team applying during during this uh, this key this key process my my colleague agnes agnes becker the communication officer of the mental health innovation network has just shared with me a link from reuters uh, uh from from article actually just just published uh, yes, yesterday uh, documenting the important work uh, that you have just described on mental health reform in Lebanon. I'm sharing with, uh, with, uh, with our audience of this webinar today. You can, you can find the link to this, to this article, article on, on the screen now. I, I want also to highlight that the action plan of, uh, of, of Lebanon and the comprehensive mental health action plan of WHO for 2013-2020 are, both documents are available on the Mental Health Innovation Network resource, resources section. I, I would suggest we, we now Thank start you, with, uh, with, with questions to you, to you, Dr. Chamai, please. So we have a number of questions. I'll start with the first question yes. from our colleague, Sara, Sara Harrison, coordinator of the Inter-Agency Standing, uh, Standing Committee Technical Reference Group on Mental Health and Psychosocial Support in Emergencies. And the question yes. is, how can we date and train Liban psychiatrists to within the public mental health system when they can often earn much more within the private health sector? Yeah, thank you, Sarah, for your question. I think this is a million dollar question uh, for no one. But the system in Lebanon is a mix of private and public in, in, in general. Uh, for, for all the health services. So when it comes to psychiatrists, what we're doing right now, I mean, uh, we're, first of all, we're including uh, the MH gap training in universities, and I'm personally uh, visiting uh, a lot of universities and speaking to the residents about the model, about the the, the reform the ministry is taking. And actually, uh, today, uh, we will start receiving the first resident from St. Joseph University who will for a three months internship as part of their uh, clinical training. So um, it might be more difficult to to convince maybe the senior psychiatrist, but uh, one, what we're trying to do is to engage a young psychiatrist during the residency. And, and two, instead of, for me, the dilemma is not, not be public, or, or private is really changing the paradigm of care and introducing to the psychiatry uh, community uh, mental health services as part of their role, uh, providing GPs as part of their role. They can do that in the university setting. They can do that in their own NGO. They, they might find 
uh, uh, other ways uh, to do it in the private. So uh, what needs to change first is the time of service provision, and we need to do that with young psychiatrists. And hopefully in the future we can find ways into contracting the public and private sector together. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chamai. Uh, we have a question from one of the participants of the webinar, uh, Sally, Sally Soraya. In terms of the lessons learned, I would like to know if involving local actors include also the community. What the level of the community participation and involvement, and what are the challenges in involving the community in the context of Lebanon? Yes. Thank you for uh, for your question. It's been a while. I hope you're doing well. Uh, so uh, actually, we struggled a lot to engage the service users in Lebanon because of stigma, because of the absence of user associations. But what we were able to do is through uh, through some NGOs, we've accessed a few service users who were more on the advocacy side to be part of the process of the strategy. Now what we what we uh, uh, we try to do, as you see, that uh, having an independent user association is part of uh, of the uh, the strategic objective. So we are, we're thinking about two ways. One way is to start with group support at the level of the PhD for persons or families of persons with mental disorders and and support this group evaluating into association. And another one is training within the quality rights. Uh, peer support volunteers, uh, training them on the concepts of uh, human rights, on the concepts of uh, community mental health, so they can become empowered and able to advocate for themselves. So these are the two routes that we're planning on to take in, but unfortunately, we haven't started as of today, uh, we're, because we're a very small team and we're moving many from Thank you. Very clear. I also received a question from uh, from Nazul Fukar uh, from from Pakistan, saying, "My country treatment gap for chronic disease is so high. How can we effectively convince policymakers to invest in mental health?" Yes, uh, I think now the evidence. So there are there the lot of different ways into convincing. And I think by now the evidence is already uh, there. WHO has done a lot of work on the economical uh, rationale of uh, investing in mental health. So the evidence is not lacking there. Uh, so I guess there are other ways that, that we could use. Well, one is using the evidence. Two is working with families and with uh, people using the services, empowering them so they can advocate for their own uh, rights. It might take some time, but this is what pays off at the end of the day, because at the end of the day, the policy makers would uh, will have to respond to the public opinion. And if you have uh, a public opinion advocating for mental health, this is definitely a push for that. Also, look uh, around you. Uh, I'm sure there are one or two policy makers that might be interested uh, whether it's because of their, uh, they know about the importance of it or whether they have some uh, lived experience themselves of, or anyone from their family talk to them. These people uh, can become champion for your cause and can help you talk to other policy makers. So there's no direct way. You just think about all the possibilities and try to knock on different doors. And when time is right, all these will converge. And you, you, before you know it, you will hit a tipping point and things will start to happen. Okay. Uh, we having a question coming through Twitter from Abdi Isaac. Uh, how, how can a country prepare for such a huge mental health challenges? The question is, is, is about preparedness before, before emergency hits. Um, <clears throat> I know we one of another strategic objective because unfortunately we live in a very unstable uh, 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 part of the world. Now the Middle East is not the most stable 
one. And so emergencies and humanitarian uh, 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 emergencies, uh, crises in general, uh, are not that rare. So part of it is effectively to have a, a, uh, a preparedness plan. Well, there are different components to it. One of them is building your services. If you have if you, all your network, your PHC centers can cater for mental health needs, then you already gained a lot. The second one is to roll out psychological first aids at the level of municipalities, at the level of teachers, at the level of any active organizations that you have. Psychological first aid at least will help people know what to do and what not to do. They don't need to be specialists. It's a one-day training. You can, do, you can scale it up very easily and it can come very handy in case of uh, uh, emergency. Uh, a third one, and build a good referral system uh, as much as possible. And if the referral system is not there yet, what you do is build kind of a, and this is also part of what we hope to do, a kind of build of a rooster of mental health specialists, mental health workers, and the different parts of country that can be activated very rapidly. So if emergency uh, uh, happens, you know that in this part of the country, I have this person, he knows what are the first five steps to do. And that cover, let's say, for the first two to weeks, and then things will get easier. Thank you. Ben Adams from Ireland is, is asking a very interesting question, actually. How did the teamwork to adapt the global health action plan to it was contextually responsive to the population of Lebanon? Again, how did the teamwork adapt the global mental health action plan to yes. work that it was contextually responsive to the population of Lebanon? Yeah. So uh, it was it was a long process as uh, uh, as I explained earlier on. So we took a draft that was in 2011, and then we started. We took the framework of the uh, of the action plan, and then we tried to see if it fits or not, and where it fitted and where it did fit. And in parallel, we had we did the situation analysis of what's happening in Lebanon already, and uh, with a few meetings to decide on what are the priorities according to different uh, stakeholders. Once we got that, we tried to fit it within the uh, the action plan, and then it got uh, it got advised by a lot of uh, people and, and agencies locally, regionally, and internationally. Uh, and with every division, so you had you had mental health specialists, you had WHO staff, uh, UNHCR staff, UNICEF staff, you had universities, public health, uh, human rights people. Them commenting and uh, and giving input, and at the end of the day, we have a document. If you go to the list of people who were part of it, uh, uh, actually, that is really uh, with, with input from uh, from different actors. Uh, and that we 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 made sure that it's in the, with the action plan by from revising the first draft, revising it accordingly to the action plan. From the division. Thank you very much. So, um, I, I have two last questions. In fact, from from the Mental Health Innovation Network team. First, uh, first, the question is about the barriers. Are the two main barriers currently facing your team during the scale up phase? How are you trying to overcome these two barriers? Uh, so. Uh... <clears throat> So there are different barriers on different levels. Uh, and I'm going to talk about two mainly. One of them is, uh, as I said, uh, the, the scaling up uh, processes that will ensure that the work goes smoothly. Because we're building the program and we're implementing, so we're building the team and we're implementing the, the strategy. And all of uh, actually, uh, are new to this. So we always find our, uh, ourselves in situations where we're working uh, harder or we missed something. So, uh, for example, we, we developed a document, but we missed sending it 
to X, Y, and Z. So what we're trying to do right now is to build the processes that ensure that whatever resources we have through the right proper channels. And, and this is something uh, that we often don't give enough attention to, at least not my, I didn't give enough attention to before. So this is one thing. Another thing is currently the program as a program is, uh, is floating within the ministry. And because of the political uh, paralysis in the country, uh, uh, the, uh, there hasn't been any, uh, been any enactment of a decree to to use the organogram of the ministry and to have a mental health department. So right now, we don't have a direct line, a budget line from the ministry. So we're working with uh, uh, with uh, budgets coming from WHO, from IMC, and from UNICEF. And, uh, and this is uh, uh, sometimes can be uh, a bit difficult to coordinate together. Or sometimes we are writing proposals with local NGOs to be implementing specific activities of the strategy because as a program, as things are right now, we cannot uh, directly receive uh, any funds. So this, at the same time, uh, you must consider it as a blessing because then you don't have to deal with all the complications of the money, but we sometimes also put uh, delays and uh, unexpected complications in the processes. Uh, what we're trying to do right now with NERS is to sign a memorandum of understanding that clearly states uh, the roles of each uh, party and to make the and the processes easier to be uh, managed by everyone. Thank you. And, and this particular question is very important to us also at the Mental Health Innovation Network. As a policymaker, how mental health innovation network can can better contribute to the policy experts' needs. One one thing for sure, uh, Fahmi, is having webinars like that because uh, I'm just thinking of uh, of uh, you know persons in my position who are in, in need to to listen to what's happening somewhere else, to get the experience of other people, to learn from it. So building this the community of of practices is, is important. Uh, a second thing that is important is me to uh, develop uh, 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 some kind of uh, database or a roster of of resource per persons for different areas of, of mental health. So, say now uh, in the class, I might be uh, uh, needing to to consult or to have a consultant to specifically work on the referral systems. So, so where do I find this person? Uh, how can I contact him? Uh, how can I know that, that uh, they're already reliable? You know, uh, and all of that. So, I think the network can help in connecting also uh, uh, programs, departments, countries to to experts who can come specifically uh, support and in specific activities when when needed. Thank you. I, I want to uh, to highlight also that that uh, this webinar would be a start. Uh, the first webinar of a, of a series of webinars would be uh, would be monthly monthly webinars, and each of them would be uh, would be uh, with uh, with a policymaker focusing on one uh, one country uh, implementation and progress towards achievements of the targets of one of the objectives of the mental health mental health action action plan. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, we, uh, we have a question from uh, uh, Khisau Barviz uh, from Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, he thinks one of the major group of vulnerable people are those receiving treatment in psychiatric hospitals mm -hmm. which are, are not included in your list. So, uh, actually, the psychiatric hospitals are uh, under the service uh, organization. And uh, if you take a, 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 a closer look in, into that, you would find uh, uh, two things. Uh, one of them is doing a quality right uh, toolkit assessment of the human rights uh, uh, of the people living in these institutions. And two, to develop 
uh, eligibility criteria for those people who uh, you call them eligibility criteria, but to open the discussion and to see which people can eventually go out of the hospital. So they're there, but they're under a service organization. They're not under this group and specifically because when we talk about service organization, of course, we're talking about all the continuum from PHC to psychiatric hospitals. Uh, another question from Dr. Parviz from Afghanistan. Yes. Uh, on, on, on the budgets for program. He said, I'm working with, yes. the, with the mental health department of Afghanistan and have passed the first five years, 2010-2015 strategy, almost mm -hmm. with the same structure you presented today. Just want to know about financing your program as mostly government allocate less budget for mental health programs within overall health budgets? For the, for the time being, the financing is external to the government budget, but also this is because of the political paralysis. Uh, a main objective that we have within the strategy is to revise the mental health budget for Lebanon. Uh, it's a strategic objective, it's, so it's there. We will know how much money is spent and how it's spent. And uh, uh, there's a momentum created in the country that can push towards an increase of the budget. I don't know how uh, or when this is going to happen, but again, we have very uh, political support within the ministry. The minister is supportive, the director general is supportive. So I think uh, uh, in the coming years, things should, should unfold in a positive manner. Thank you. Uh, so I think we're coming to, to the end of our webinar today. I want to thank all uh, all our participants, and I want to thank you, Doctor Doctor Shamai, for the for the excellent presentation and for your for your time your time today. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be available available on the Mental Health uh, Innovation Network this this week. Thank thank you very much again. Thank you, Doctor Fahmi, and thank you all for uh, being part of the webinar. Thank you for giving your time.